we will shift gears a little bit and uh, what we have in store is um, part of our eminent alumni insight series and so um, um, moving from faculty members now we move to uh, successful PhD students and so it's my great pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. To Wee Hyung as this year's eminent alumni speaker. Uh, so we, uh, we Hyung graduated from NUS with a PhD in computer science in 2009 and he is currently Senior Director for Cloud and AI at Microsoft. Um, so um, Dr. To will be sharing uh, insights from his PhD journey, or in his own words, uh, what he calls the heart of data and AI. So um, I, uh, um, I'm really excited to, um, to, to, to hear your insights, uh, uh, so, uh, Wee Hyung, sorry, so over to you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Professor Jessica. Uh, can you all see my screen? Yeah, it looks great. Okay, sounds good. So I think first of all, before we get into uh, this, I, I just want to thank like Prof Wong, Prof Carolyn, Prof Lee, right, and the organizing committee for this opportunity to share my data and AI journey um, with both current as well as to be members of the NUS family. And I think it's an honor to be able to come back to NUS virtually, if you will, right? And thank you everyone for your time. And I think where it all started was really S15. Uh, and for some of you that might have visited NUS or will be visiting NUS, S15 is a building that's close to the National University Hospital. Uh, lots of fond memories there. And that was when I enrolled at NUS as an undergraduate uh, with the then Department of Information System and Computer Science. And I think over the years at NUS, I met amazing teachers, friends as well as mentors and, you know, Throughout the years as an NUS, right, we jogged together around the campus, we celebrated birthdays, we celebrated each other's PhD journey, you know, when a paper gets accepted, uh, or we console each other when a paper gets rejected. Uh, but I think, long, long story short, I remember fondly, right, all the time spent at NUS, and I felt like they, those were really pivotal, right, in shaping who I am and starting my uh, data and AI career, right, uh, right now in the United States. Now, what you see here will probably be, you know, uh, many of the folks that I've worked with over the years, right? I was a teaching assistant at NUS, uh, and at the point, that was one way of funding me through graduate school. And I just want to thank NUS as well as the School of Computing, right, for all these opportunities. And what you see in the center are really my uh, honors years, masters, and PhD advisors, uh, Professor Stephen Brasson and Professor Lee Mong Lee. And they taught me many things throughout the years, right, both on, you know, how to do research, uh, but more importantly, giving me the opportunity to be part of the database group at School of Computing. And one interesting fun fact about the database group at School of Computing is that it's actually well uh, established. And more importantly, the output that come, came from the group, right, is well recognized globally, right? So today I work at Microsoft and some of my colleagues uh, are some of the collaborators with some of the professors at NUS, right? In fact, uh, one of my co collaborators today uh, is Professor Raghu Ramakrishnan, and he literally wrote the database textbooks that we all grew up with from undergraduate years to graduate years. And I think most importantly, I felt like da the database group at NUS uh, and School of Computing right, provided me with a really nurturing environment where, one, I could do my best work, but more importantly, I could, and I was encouraged to stay curious, right? And in that journey, of course, uh, there's many others, right? Professor Tan Kian Lee, Professor Tan Tiao Singh, Professor Aaron Tan, and many of these outstanding professors, right? Like interacting with them through some of my work uh, with the alumni community uh, encouraged me as I worked through uh, the goals of graduating with a PhD. And so th those were amazing years. Um, and I think next, I just want to start off with, you know, how did I uh, get to where I am today? Uh, but more importantly, it actually started with a very simple question, right? At the point in time, I was an undergraduate, uh, exiting my third year, looking for my honors year project. Uh, and Professor Stephen Brosson at the point was offering an opportunity to work on this thing called a web wrapper, uh, extending some of his work that he has done at Sloan at MIT. And essentially, the core of the web wrapper project was essentially putting a relational database uh, engine that is able to query the World Wide Web, right? And of course, at the point, internet was not that prevalent then. And one thing led on to another, right? As I was finishing up my honors year project at NUS, he said, hey, you know, do you want to spend summer in Cornell 
working on Predator. Um, and what was also interesting and how life, you know, stitches itself together in interesting ways was uh, the professor that was responsible for uh, the Predator project at Cornell was a guy called Philip Bonnet, right? Uh, and the host for the group uh, is Professor Johannes Gerkes, uh, who now is who now leads MSR on the Microsoft Research Team at Redmond. And that summer in Cornell was amazing, right? One, it allows me an opportunity to work on Predator, and Predator was essentially a research-based uh, database management system, and I had the opportunity to work on you know how to implement joins as part of the database engine. You know, at that point, you know, I was coming out from my honors year, getting into the accelerated master's program. But I did not know that that would actually seed a lot of the things that's happened uh, in later part of life. Uh, and as I was coming back from Cornell in the summer, right, he said, well, you know, you're wrapping up your master's, do you want to do a PhD? Uh, at that point, I said no, right, because uh, I was bonded and I was a scholar. And so I left NUS, right, into uh, in working in one of the telcos in Singapore. But a few years after that, I decided that, hey, you know, I really want to pursue an academic career. Uh, and so I told uh, Professor Stefan then that, well, you know, I really want to do my PhD. Uh, and so the work extended to, you know, take Predator on what it is today and bringing it into uh, what is then known as complex event processing systems, right? And as we fast forward, right, uh, that was really the beginning of my data and AI career. Um, I contributed to uh, the extension of Predator at that point. Um, and at, at the point, DAPA, which is the equivalent of some of the funding agencies in Singapore, right, was looking at how you could build what they call a census database system. And what it essentially is, is if you scatter modes across you know, a very wide environment, each of the modes with very limited batteries on it, right, is essentially one role in the database management system. And how do you query it? noting that there's battery limitations, constraints, uh, and so on and so forth, right? And so that work uh, was amazing. Uh, I contributed to some of the extension. And if you recall the discussions around census database system, probably around 10, 14, 15 years ago. And if you reflect on what it is today, today there's a lot of discussions around IoT or internet of things uh, and being able to you know, make sense of the internet of things, if you will. How do you deploy database engines to the edge, right? Or discussions around edge computing. Many of them had very humble beginnings in some of this research, right? That has happened a long time ago. And so that was really the beginning of my data and AI career. And as I was graduating through uh, from NUS uh, at, at a point, you know, working on census databases, complex event processing systems, it was really interesting, right? I, while through grad school, uh, I was teaching. And I was really enjoying my role as a teaching assistant and eventually I became a lecturer. Uh, and you know, coming to the last year, you know, you had your publications, you're ready to graduate. It's either to stay back in NUS to teach, uh, you know, and continue, be able to uh, continue the academic journey, if you will, or come to the industry, right? And at that point, I was actually planning to stay on at NUS and probably I'll be uh, contributing to NUS today. Um, but, what was also interesting is, remember the stain I had at Cornell, uh, and at a point, one of the affiliates of Cornell who later joined Microsoft, right, uh, a guy called Pravin Sada Harris, right, just joined Microsoft, probably, he took a sabbatical from Cornell, he went to uh, Microsoft leading what is known as the SQL Server Compact project, which is essentially, how do you put a small database engine onto mobile devices? Um, and his student, um, a guy called Prakash, was starting a group at Shanghai, um, you know, an R, a SQL Server R&D team in Shanghai. And we met when he was at NUS at giving a career talk. And he said, hey, you know, why don't you come to Shanghai, spend a few years, you know, you get to work on, uh, you, you, get access to the, you get access to the source code for one of the most successful commercial database systems uh, on the planet. Uh, spend a few years, you know, if you want to stay on in academia, you can always go back to academia. Uh, and of course, I say, well, you know, make, it makes sense, right? I really want access, but well, I work on research database systems. I really want to be able to contribute to a commercial database system, if you will. 
And it was also interesting because I think at that point in time, I probably have not left Singapore except that short trip to Cornell. Uh, and it was a way to push me out of my comfort zone. Uh, and going to Shanghai, we were planning to spend two years. At that point, you know, I, I just got married. Uh, my kid was really young. Um, and so we went to Shanghai as a leap of faith. And I joined Microsoft, right? And I think after I joined Microsoft and throughout grad school and even early on uh, as undergraduate and masters, I always dream of, hey, you know, that I could be a superhero. I could make a tremendous impact um, both within the database community, but at the same time, a bigger impact where I could give back, right? Uh, to, to, you know, a lot of the really uh, amazing people that I met. And so I joined Microsoft um, and I went to Shanghai. So this is the Microsoft Sam campus at, in Shanghai, which is near the Shanghai Jiao Da University. And I joined as a product manager, uh, leading uh, what we call the SQL Server Integration Services team. And the team was really about how do you bring data from diverse heterogeneous data source, be able to combine them, join them, right? Uh, and enrich them in ways so that you could land them in, into a relational data warehouse, right? Which is amazing. Um, later, did I know that the two years became six years in Shanghai, uh, amazing years in Shanghai, where uh, Expos was held there, Singapore Day was held there. It was just amazing. And this opportunity came along uh, in the US because that was the beginning of the uh, cloud or cloud computing, if you will. And there was always discussion around how do you bring a database system to the cloud uh, and making sure that it is elastic, it is highly scalable, right? And it's able to be multi-tenant to meet all the needs of all the customers that we serve. And so I moved to the US probably about nine and a half years ago. Uh, staying on with the same group, but taking on the challenge or looking at how do I take the product that I was working on then and bringing it to the cloud, right? It was amazing uh, to meet amazing people. And so you see amazing people that I met throughout the years at Microsoft. Uh, and you see me at the lower left corner there. And I think Microsoft mission had always been empowering everyone on the planet, right, to achieve more. And I think over the years, I really was able to contribute to that mission, but more importantly, making an impact and one little step closer, right, to becoming a superhero. Not exactly, right? And so in the US, uh, over the years, uh, given that Microsoft is a huge company, I had the opportunity to evolve uh, besides owning a product, right, to become the technical advisor uh, to one of the corporate vice president and CTO at Microsoft. At that point, we were just formulating the AI strategy and what should we even think about uh, deep learning that was coming out from academia, tremendous progress being made in the field. Um, and as part of the journey, I co-founded the AI for Earth data science and engineering team, uh, which was really using AI to solve some of the worst toughest sustainability challenges. Um, and I evolved into leading a team, a global team of data scientists, uh, running a strategic customer AI lab, uh, working with some of the top customers from retail, to energy, et cetera. And that also gave me an opportunity to fulfill another childhood dream of mine, right? which is to travel the world, uh, which was amazing, right? And so today uh, I came back um, to the data business, right? And today I run uh, the data integration portfolio of business at Microsoft, uh, which is an amazing stretch goal for me, right? And along this journey, after I moved to the US, uh, I, I like to write. Uh, I think that interest in writing uh, continues after graduate school. And so over the past, uh, I'll say few years, if you will, right? Every year I had contributed one book uh, to the data and AI community, right? Some of this got translated into Korean, Chinese, uh, German, and many others. Uh, it was exciting. It was a way for me to share, but more importantly, to be able to you know, uh, know a lot of co-authors, right? That collaborated with me on some of these books, uh, which was really exciting, right? And of course the last book came out last year uh, on practical with supervision. Now, the rest of the slides shows you, you know, some of the work that I've done. This was really work that we did uh, with the group that was at Microsoft that was looking at how do you put a data center under the surface of an ocean? One, you know, to make sure that you're able to cool it using the ocean current, but two, a green data center that is locked out, right? Um, and at that point, I remember the PI for the group, right, called me when I was attending a conference and I said, hey, you know, we can you run the AI for Earth data science and engineering team. Uh, I need help. That was how I started. And I said, well, what kind of help do you need? And he said, well, I do have cameras on this um, 
data center that are just put under the surface of, uh, uh, of the ocean, right? And we just pull it down today. And I really want to understand the impact of, you know, putting a data center underneath water and the impact to the marine ecosystem. And I have all these cameras. Uh, we did not know what we want to do with it, but there's nice pictures that I'm going to give it to you, you know, why don't you count the amount of marine life near the data center? Uh, so this was actually the very beginning of projects uh, working with MSR, right? Uh, putting and looking at how um, the effect of putting a data center underneath the water, right? And this is off the coast of uh, somewhere in Europe, right? Which I will not name. Uh, really, really fun project. Other projects that I work on as part of AI for Earth. Uh, this was a project on trying to understand land cover mapping, meaning how do you color every single pixel, right? Of some of this satellite imagery that's already available, right? Today, this is easily achieved through some of the segmentation techniques that's out there. But how do you run this, not on GPUs, but on CPU, at a speed that is fast enough to meet the needs? Uh, how do you run this on FPGAs? Uh, and so on and so forth. And so this was joint work with an organization called the Chesapeake Bay Conservancy in the US, uh, where you know, they wanted to take all these satellite images with different degree of quality, and be able to color every single pixel on the map um, and be able to then use this as a way to do planning, etc. And so this was work that was done jointly. Uh, it was a really fun project that lasted several years uh, to a point where we say, well, you know, why are we just col coloring Chesapeake Bay, which is just like a watershed in the US? How long does it take to be able to color every single pixel of satellite imagery for the United States uh, using an FPGA cluster that we we're launching at that point in time? Uh, and we did it in 10 minutes, right? Uh, which was fascinating work uh, and always pushing the boundaries as well. Um, another piece of work that we did um, was also uh, looking at how to deploy deep, deep learning models on whether it's iOS or Android, right? And be able to give this to, you know, groups like uh, Doctors Without Borders, et cetera, right? To be able to diagnose chest x-rays or give preliminary kind of, uh, analysis, right, of some of the chest x-rays and what kind of potential causes um, or diseases uh, the person has as a way to pre-filter before the people in the villages get sent, right, uh, to the, you know, CT hospital and so on and so forth. Uh, and so this was amazing work looking at how do you take this AI model at the point we're coming up with a runtime called the Onyx runtime and be able to run this, right, on some of this hardware that might not be even be Microsoft specific. Uh, it was a really fun project as well. So I think, long story short, my journey, you know, from NUS to industry, uh, I did join Microsoft after um, I graduated. But I think at that point in time, you know, my heart was still with the academia and I really want to spend time with academia. Uh, and now, you know, my role allows me to work with both, you know, people that hosted my PhD uh, or my trip to Cornell earlier, right? Johanna Skirkers. Uh, many of these industry leaders, right, that essentially birth many of the concepts in the database industry. And so I now actually have the best of both worlds. Uh, I don't think I'm a superhero yet, but I'm really happy and uh, glad to have this opportunity to make an impact, right? Uh, other articles uh, on AI for Earth, which was taken in Singapore several years ago. And I think summarizing all that I've shared, right, the learnings is, I think I felt like, this years, many years after I left NUS, I feel it's important for us to have gratitude, right? Being thankful for all the beautiful things and the people that are in your journey, whether it was in grad school, throughout my uh, right now 15 years career with Microsoft, having gratitude that, you know, the mentors that help you get to where you are, but more importantly, the friends that stayed with you that encouraged you along the journey. Uh, the PhD journey, I think, was amazing, right, at NUS the rigor and the ability for you to focus on one thing and do it well uh, was amazing. And as many, many of us that have gone through grad school, um, you know, like, it is not always going to be a smooth journey. Many a times you get paper rejection. I remember one Saturday I received three rejection emails. Uh, not the best way to start the weekend. But having grit because that passion and perseverance will last you through that journey. It's going to last you through grad school. It's going to last you through your career uh, as you evolve and build a career out of, you know, things that you love. 
uh, on the right, that was actually me uh, in this place called Nanbei uh, Lake in Shanghai as part of a team building exercise, jumping to catch that pole up there and taking that leap of faith at times when I left Singapore to Shanghai, from Shanghai to the US, because I think you never know what you'll find and what you can achieve, right? And I think the last piece I felt, regardless of where we are, you know, different stage of career, whether it's, in, whether it's staying on the academia or the industry, being always continuously curious about things. Uh, and, you know, in a lot of the discussions that I had and leaders at Microsoft had was that, you know, instead of being a know-it-all, you should be a learn-it-all. And we, should, we are naturally born curious and, you know, we should learn to ask questions. Uh, and that, that was amazing. So this was some of the learnings I had over the years. And I think I just want to close off with whatever you do in life, feel your heart. Many a times, you know, whether it's first love, your first child is born, your first paper got accepted, uh, or even, you know, you get accepted into NUS graduate school. Remember how and where all these things started. Because that love and that heart is going to keep you and sustain you, right, throughout many things in life. And I think lastly, I just want to say, you know, again, a huge thank you to NUS graduate school, NUS and School of Computing. Uh, and that's, I think, uh, one picture of the beautiful com tree that is just recently launched. Uh, you know, for all these opportunities to learn, but more importantly, you know, having this opportunity to share uh, and give back to the community as well. So with that, I hand back to the community. Thank you.